Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Jim McCarty, and we're here today with Gabe. Is it Signs? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, Gabe's from New Mexico. And um, how long ago did we meet, Gabe? Has um, it been, what, four months? Yeah, about three months? four months, I think, around, was it? Yeah, about four months. Yeah, about four months ago. And so what we're going to do right now is we're just documenting kind of what has happened in the time since he first got injured. And uh, if I remember correct, you were telling me what was about four and a half, five years ago right. that you had a car wreck? Uh, yeah, four and a half years ago. I was uh, in a car wreck with a friend. The car rolled four times. Uh, I didn't lose consciousness, but uh, I was pretty out of it. Couldn't remember anything for more than five minutes for about two weeks. Um, from there. Uh, and that was about five years ago? Yeah, about four and a half. Okay, four and a half, five, yeah. okay. And then the car tumbled like four times? Correct. So obviously you got banged around yeah, or thrown pretty around. Pretty bad, pretty bad concussion. Concussion, and what happened to your neck or brain function, cognition, stuff like that at, at that time? I mean, outs I mean, for those two weeks, like I said, I couldn't think very clearly. Uh, I spent a lot of time laying down. Um, but after about two, three weeks, it seemed to have resolved itself. I seemed to have been uh, feeling a lot better. Yeah. Um, and then about a year after that. Now, how old, how old are you now? I'm 28. Okay, so you're about 23 or so yeah, when, 23. when the car wreck happened. Uh -huh. Okay, so two weeks of sore muscles and right. brain fog from the concussion. And then you kind of got over it? Mm -hmm. Correct. And was life pretty much normal? Uh, it seemed to be. Okay, and then what happened with the scuba diving? So a year after the car accident, I went for a five day um, scuba diving certification in Thailand. I noticed some things I got for the first day, you know, I was kind of not thinking as clearly, but I kept going and it was a five day certification. Um, the fifth day, um, that night, I came up and I was feeling pretty out of it because uh, we did a night dive. And about how deep? Do you remember how deep? Uh, we were on average about 100 feet. 100 feet, okay. Yeah. Um, and so on the fifth day, um, well, yeah, we came up that evening. I went to bed. Um, I woke up. I was seeing spots everywhere. I was really dizzy. Uh, had really bad headaches. Couldn't think clearly. Um, the dizziness and the spots cleared up. Um, the headaches were with me for. Um, Headaches and clinic thing were with me for the next several years. And, I mean, um, and you were in pretty good shape because weren't you like a Marine or? Right, yeah, I've been in the Marines prior to going into college and then I studied, I was studying exercise science in, in college. So. so you understood exercise physiology and all the muscles right. and all that stuff, but after five days of going down to around 100 feet, then something happened and the brain fog just kind of settled in and wouldn't leave. Right. And then you came back from Thailand and over the next, that was what, three, four, uh, four years? Yeah, three, four that was years about now. three and a half years ago, yeah. Okay. And then over the next three, four years, I think you told me you saw about 30 doctors? Yes. I, after that, I went and spent a year in Australia where I went to school, but I mean, Obviously, I wasn't able to get very good grades. Um, I managed to pass my classes, but I'd been a straight A student prior to that, so that was a big. So issue. straight A's prior to the car wreck and the injuries uh, that happened from the scuba diving from the pressure. Right. And so then you were going to school, but having trouble uh, maintaining the same level of academic. Right, I couldn't concentrate. Um, I generally had to study, I would say, for at least three times as long to retain anything as what I had to previously. Um, and so I just wasn't and able And so to you do. saw what, uh, your primary care doctor? Over there I saw, I think, a primary care, a gastrointestinologist. Um, I can't recall if I saw a neurologist as well there. Um, and several, there were several other doctors as well, and they sent me to several different specialists, I don't recall. And then they did uh, like x-rays and x rays and MRIs, different endoscopies and you know, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of different blood work. Um, they couldn't, they didn't see anything 
major that would be causing any of these issues. And, and then later, eventually, you found some doctor, was he in Arizona or California? Uh, in California, yep. So I come back to the States, I saw a lot more doctors, I mean, little things helped uh, here and there, but nothing, had, nothing fixed it, maybe 5-10% at okay. the most was the improvement I was seeing. Um, and so I saw a doctor in California and he had an MRI, and I, by this point I'd already had two other MRIs and right. they didn't show anything. Um, I showed all the, you know, blood flow or whatever uh, mm -hmm. was normal. So, but this MRI was three times as powerful as the typical MRI, and right. he was a doctor that specialized in veins, and in particular in veins, uh, and their blood flow to the brain. Um, and what did he find? That 50% of the blood flow to my right jugular vein was being um, restricted by my, uh, the skull itself. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the bones, you know, were pinching. Yep. pinching the vein closed, so I was only getting 50% blood flow uh, to this side of brain. The brain, so of course, it was you know affecting all kinds of other issues with my hormones and my basically ability to function. Right. And what did he recommend? He recommended um, the first thing he recommended was a, a Nuka chiropractor. Basically, he said I needed to adjust this um, the brain stem the, the brain cervical spine. right and he'd also talked maybe a neuromuscular dentist um, and I asked him I'd heard of the mm -hmm. the cranial therapy and the balloon therapy if he had any familiarity with that he said he wasn't personally familiar with it but he'd had um, patients who'd had very good success right. with that and um, correcting the problem um, and so that was when I uh, started looking for someone to now, do that. now didn't he go in and do actually kind of an angioplasty type of thing using a balloon into the into the blood vessels yes, of the brain? Yes, he did. A, I can't recall the procedure itself. I mean, it's, and he called the condition chronic cerebral vascular insufficiency, CCSVI. Um, and so he said I had two other spots that were restricted and he went and ballooned those open. I think one at this vein right here and then my left jugular. And then he tried to balloon open the left, right jugular um, and he said, you know, there's nothing we can do with about this one because it's structurally closed. He's like, we could put a stent in there, but that's not going to work because, you know, it's, it's structurally still, it's just going to crush, crush the right. stent. Um, so he said, you know, at this point, this is, now I'm going to have to refer you to someone who can actually right. structurally change right. um, the skull and the areas around the skull. Was, that when, was that when you got online and found me or called me or? Yes. I, I, well, I guess I'd heard of the therapy um, right. prior to going there, but I'd already booked the appointment to go see him. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, I might as well. I mean, I've already made this appointment. Yeah, and then your mom's a, a medical doctor also, yeah. right? Correct. Yeah. And then you called me, and uh, do you remember our first phone con? Was it a phone conversation first, or was it an email? Uh, there was, a, yeah, a couple of emails first. Right. Um, and then then a phone conversation and you explained pretty in depth um, you know the structural anatomy and uh, how this would be affecting it how this treatment could fix this right um, and yeah I mean so I was pretty sold um, at that point <laughs> yeah and then um, you came and I know there was some skepticism from various family members and uh, then I think we, if I remember correctly, I think we did eight treatments in four days. Mm -hmm. And um, the first, do you remember your first balloon treatment, what it felt like? Uh, yes. Was it scary? Did you hear anything? Uh, yeah, we heard some, some cracking. There's definitely some pressure. I mean, it was unpleasant, but I mean, okay. it wasn't, certainly wasn't like excruciating or anything. How long did that last? Uh, uh, about two or three seconds. Okay. And um, if I remember correct, we did one in the morning and one in the afternoon, like on Monday, one in the morning, one in the afternoon on Tuesday, same on Wednesday, same on Thursday. And the first seven treatments, you felt the pressure, you heard the cartilage moving, but you didn't really notice much except that it felt kind of like we stirred it up. Right. And then what happened with that eighth treatment, uh -huh. the very last treatment of that first trip to come see me? So I noticed within about a minute and a half of the treatment finishing, 
um, an immediate improvement obviously in cognition, which would have been my main issues, constant headaches and an inability to think clearly. Um, so there was probably a twenty percent improvement um, in both of those. We're talking in like five minutes. Just, yes, um, um, and so I mean it was pretty earth shattering for me because I mean I'd been to doctor. I mean all the traditional doctors and specialists, of course, and then of course I'd you know tried more unusual things like. Reiki, you know, and or different sorts of or, um, acupuncture, um, and of course none of those had done anything. And the stuff that had worked had worked gradually, and maybe five or ten right. percent at the most. So yeah, it was a pretty big deal. And, and that that twenty percent that you noticed just boom, pretty well stayed, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then over the next uh, month, I think you called me and said that it had settled down some more to where there was about a 30% yeah. improvement. Mm -hmm. So there was more improvement, kind of like dominoes falling even over the next three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we had you come back and I believe we did uh, eight more treatments. Um, what was the total out of the, I know all six skull plates were locked up, and out of those 78 patterns, do you remember how many? I want to say it was either, it was either 42 or 44, so okay. it was pretty, pretty locked up. So it was about double the average. Mm -hmm. And so we did that second trip out, and uh, what do you remember about that second trip? Um, the second trip, I know we went a little lighter than the first, and then I kept bugging you if we could go a little heavier, so we went a little bit heavier. Um, so that one, it took a little longer to settle down. I didn't notice the improvements until, I want to say about 10 days out. Okay. About 10 days out, I don't know if you So remember. after we finished the second group of treatments, then it took about 10 days before, because I kind of stirred it up, and then it took about 10 days to mm -hmm. settle down? Yep, and then I woke up on the 10th. The morning of the 10th day and it probably jumped up to maybe 55, 50, somewhere around there. I mean, but another big improvement and I, at that point I was, you know, 100% sure that, okay, so it was like <laughs> placebo effect right. or something, you know, that I maybe just thought I was feeling better. Like there was no question um, for me at that point yeah. um, that it was. That we were on the right track. Right. Uh, and what we're again doing is, like I mentioned, the, um, inner ear where your sense of balance is and the occipital bone, the temporal bone, and the sphenoid bone all come together kind of like pieces of a pie. Mm -hmm. And where they meet at the middle of where the pie would be, there is a little hole that we call the jugular foramen mm -hmm. and that's where the jugular vein exits and that's what your uh, medical doctor, the brain surgeon was saying was compressed and that's what we're working to unlock all the skull plates but eventually to get behind that right ear where all those meet and so on you it just happens to be that the spot that's locked up is the last spot that unlocks. Mm -hmm. So we're working our way there so by the time you had 50-55% improvement we had unlocked three skull plates, mm -hmm. so the front half of the head, and you were already noticing about a 50% improvement, and we hadn't even gotten to the back half of the head. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty excited. Yeah, <laughs> so was uh, I. <laughs> I was very excited. Um, yeah, and I felt a lot more driven. Um, I had my, dr I would say all my drive back, but I mean, I was really started able to start pursuing things and taking much more of an interest in life again. So, I mean, those were some... I know somewhere things. in there you were trying to decide about going back to college and either studying to become a chiropractor or an osteopath. Right, right. And I think you're more on the osteopathic yeah. uh, schedule at this point, mm -hmm. which I think is good. And then with that third trip to see me, then uh, we were working to get a little bit more movement mm -hmm. on the back of the head. And so we kind of stirred stuff up. Yeah quite a bit and uh, over the next 10 days to 30 days uh, things were trying to settle out but it never did completely right. settle out and so 
we, again, we stirred it up, but then this fourth time we've been working to do fine tuning mm -hmm. as we've been working on the back of right. the head on the occiput. Uh, so we've just finished, what, the fourth trip down? Mm -hmm. And um, so what have you noticed this week? Um, I mean, nothing as immediate as the first one, but I definitely noticed some cognitive things. Um, I don't know, colors seem a little brighter, things seem a little more clear. My mind seems more relaxed. Um, obviously, you know, the headaches are still kind of calming down from the, mm -hmm. the treatment itself. Um, and with the last treatment, I had felt a bit of a regression uh -huh. um, because it didn't have a chance to, to I guess, settle down. So this time, now I definitely can tell that it's, it's improving. Um, so yeah, I guess those would be the, the things I can tell so far, I'm sure, right. within the next 10 days to two weeks. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have a life again. And uh, I think you said you're gonna go on a backpacking trip here mm -hmm. soon? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be good, the fresh air mm -hmm. and all that. I, I kind of uh, warned you against any kickboxing right. or uh, grappling, getting hit in the head, and running on concrete and heel strike mm -hmm. and all the things getting on a roller coaster or whatever that whips you around. So, uh, car wrecks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, other than that, the things that are a little bit more gentle and relaxing, I think, uh, oh, and we, uh, we talked about lifting weights and avoiding having the bar right, any, right yeah, across the spine. The, the spine there. But other than that, any of the exercises you want to do, we're really trying to stretch mm -hmm. the flexors mm -hmm. on the front half of the body and tone up the extensors on the spine, on the back, and anything to uh, build the core muscles. Mm -hmm. All those things are okay. going to be helpful. So, anything else you can think of for the people that are watching? Um, this and might be almost everybody when they first hear about it, they think this is outside the box and they're skeptical. Right, yeah, I mean, there's nothing I could say except you'd have to try it for yourself and uh, let that be your guide. Because for me, um, I mean, because I've had a lot of treatments done and a lot of times, you know, I'd be like, oh, this is it, this is what's wrong with me. And, you know, my mom being a doctor too, she yeah. thought she, you know, uh, successfully diagnosed it and, you know, there was some good, you know, signs, uh, it seems like that could be it, and nothing ever panned out, so I wasn't like, immediately, you know, right. like, this is going to save me, you know, this is it, this is what I've been looking for, I was, you know, alright, we'll give it a go, we'll see, we'll see if it works, and then, the last treatment made yeah. a huge difference, and then I was like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's go, let's keep on with it, so. yeah, anyway, I'm happy for you, well, thank you, Doc, <laughs> I appreciate it.